Hello everybody. Time is flying. We're already at uh, 1992 now. And uh, this was an interesting year for me. Yeah. So, 1992. What uh, things caught my eye about this year? Well, this was the year that uh, Boris Yeltsin and uh, President George Bush met at Camp David in America, formally putting an end to the Cold War. Space Shuttle Endeavour made its first flight that year. It was the replacement for the Challenger, which uh, was destroyed a couple of years earlier. There was also a lot of uh, political unrest happening in the uh, in Middle Europe, Eastern Europe, as the uh, Cold War was over. A lot of the uh, small countries that used to be part of the Soviet Union started gaining independence and and demanding their own autonomy. Um, so that was a, that's a good thing, I suppose. So in 1992, a few of those that passed away that year were Jose Ferrer, the uh, famous actor. Benny Hill passed away that year. Uh, yeah, died alone in his flat, in his home. Millionaire, but still alone. Malena Dietrich passed away that year, as did Isaac Asimov, uh, the... Uh, one of the uh, kings of science fiction writing back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Certainly his, uh, a lot of his books I did read. Uh, I've still got some of them now. They're not behind me. They're in a different place where I keep the books. And Dick York also died that year. Uh, he was the uh, other half of Bewitched. He was in the series Bewitched. by for the uh, young witch type. Yeah. Anyway. Born that year, uh, here's a few names that I recognise. Taylor Lautner, uh, I believe he's a, uh, played the werewolf type trap in the Twilight movies. Uh, Stoffel Van Dorn was born that year. He's a Formula 1 driver, currently driving the other McLaren alongside uh, Fernando Alonso. Uh, hopefully McLaren will get a better car next year, but who knows. Chloe Bennett, star of the Avengers TV show. Selena Gomez. Pop starlet Laura Kenny, gold medal winning cyclist back in uh, the uh, 2012 London Olympics and then later on the 2016 Olympics as well. And so also born that year was Cara Levine. Levigny, how do you pronounce that anyway? I saw her in Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, which uh, was a very pretty movie. The special effects and everything just looked gorgeous. Uh, unfortunately, the film was let down a bit by uh, not very good story writing, screenwriting. You know, it's the only thing that let it down really. Could have been better. And also born that year was Destiny Cyrus, better known as uh, Miley Cyrus, daughter of Billy Ray Cyrus. John Boyega, you know who he is. And uh, Daisy Ridley was also born that year. Oh, I'm no one. Oh, I'm just a scavenger. Everybody's someone. The droid is not for sale. So what was I up to in 1992? Well... I was still technically unemployed, even though I was doing the uh, volunteer work at the uh, Tokyo magazine for Blind and Partially Sighted, uh, Braffa cassette. Still going right now, things Braffa Tokyo magazines. Uh, anyway, I was in this comic shop in Bradford. I uh, can't remember what it was called. <laughs> it was a fairly large place for, for, for a comic shop in Bradford. And uh, they had this uh, lifestyle cutout of uh, Mr. Spock from Star Trek, just standing there. And taped to his chest were some flyers for a Star Trek convention. And I picked one up and had a look at it and I thought, this may be an interesting thing to uh, report on for the talking magazines. So I had a word with uh, the woman who run the talking magazine and uh, she said, yeah, fine, if you can get it, go. And so I had a word with the organizers and uh, got myself a ticket and they gave me a press badge. Yeah. So the writing's a bit faded on this because it's very old and the uh, and if you're wondering I uh, put my badges on a little hat. Anyway, more about that later maybe. Uh, and so, anyway, so I went to my first uh, Star Trek convention in Manchester. It's called Recon 92. It was the official British Star Trek convention and uh, I'd never been to an event like this before so I was I had no idea what to expect. And uh, I was booked in a room, so I was, I was there for three nights, two nights, three nights in the hotel. And uh, they found me a roommate who uh, turned to be a quite a nice fellow. Uh, 
and I took some photographs. Uh, so I, I did some interviews with the people. I, so I don't think I have a copy of it at all anymore. Some other convention. So uh, I arrived, I uh, registered, checked into my room, went up to the room, dumped all my stuff, came down to the convention. I went into one of the first rooms of the convention and the first thing they said to me, uh, where's your badge? I said, what badge? Said, you, and they told me that you've got to wear um, you got to wear your badge, and I didn't realise I had to wear a badge. So I uh, went back up to the room, got my badge down, got my badge, put it on, and I was sorted for the rest of the weekend. Virtually everybody I met was wonderful. You know, it's one of those times you go to uh, an event and everybody just, you know, is cheerful, is happy to meet you. Had a lot of good conversations, met some people. Took some photographs because I, uh, I did take my camera with me. One of the guests at that convention was... Uh, DC Fontana, Dorothy Fontana, and her husband, who uh, he did special effects on movies. I think he did special effects on films like uh, The Dark Man. Uh, apparently, he wasn't very happy with the special effects he did with that movie, but I quite like the film. So. Uh, but uh, DC Fontana was there. I got to interview her, and uh, a lot of these people that I've, I met there for the first time are still going to conventions. Some of them are organising conventions. Some of them bring their families now to conventions. You know, it's like being passed on to the younger generation and uh, it's been a great thing, yeah, so. And because uh, after that convention, you know, I did my piece for the Bradford Talk magazine and uh, signed up for the next Star Trek convention, which happened in 1993. So I'll maybe talk to you about that next time. One thing that did happen at this convention or one of the programs they had, because they had a lot of programs on, you know, uh, videos of Star Trek showing in one room, videos of something else showing in another room, sci-fi movies showing in another room, and there's a little room where this bloke was uh, had set up on a tiny TV, you know, talking literally, <laughs> small portable TV, and he was showing a pile of uh, anime, just Japanese animation, so in the evening I went up and watched almost everything he had to show, and some of the stuff he had to show was uh, quite obscure, almost everything was a uh, fan subtitle, and some of the stuff wasn't even subtitled at all. So, uh, so as the uh, program progressed, you know, the show went on. He said, "Oh, he's saying that, and now that's, and now they're saying this." And so, you know, giving a, 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 a rendering of the story as he watched it, because none of us spoke Japanese. So, uh, and that fellow also did a little show at uh, the following convention I went to. But I'll talk to you about that tomorrow. Yeah. So, 1992. I was 24. Starting something new in my life. See you all tomorrow.